A major aspect of statistics is statistical modeling. Yet I found that it's rare for educators to stop and explain to new students exactly what models are. So, let's do that. When we decide to use statistics, we are presumably doing so in order to understand something happening in the world. So obviously, our first step is to go out and observe said world. We do this by collecting data. Once we have those data, we want to look for patterns. Models, then, are simple descriptions of the patterns we see in the data. Let's use an example to make this clearer. What if we wanted to model dart throwing accuracy? If we collect all the data and look at all the patterns, we might find lots of things that impact dart throwing accuracy, at least a little bit. These factors might range from the very important, like the skill of the dart thrower, to the very minimally important factors like the air disturbance from the nearby air conditioner. Now it might seem like the air conditioner is an entirely unimportant factor, but it is probably having at least some impact, right? How do you know how big that impact is? This goes back to our model. Remember our model is based on patterns of data from observations in the world, and it's going to do several things for us. The statistical model can help us figure out which variables matter and which variables don't. For instance, it might tell us that the skill of the dart thrower matters, but the air conditioner doesn't. We couldn't have known that until we developed a reliable model. It could have been the case that some of the bars where we collected our data might have had particularly strong air conditioners, and they really did impact the dart throwers. The model can also tell us how much a particular variable matters. For instance, maybe the skill of the dart thrower matters a ton, the air conditioner only matters a little. A good dart thrower is still going to throw well, whether it's breezy or not. It can also tell you how well it described the phenomenon. Or at least it can tell you how well it describes the observations you provided it about the phenomenon. And lastly, it can help you predict the future. When you get a good model, you can record the current conditions, plug them into your predictive model, and get a predicted outcome. Imagine that I have a good dart thrower who is feeling confident and a particularly weak air conditioner. The model would probably predict that their thrower's performance is likely to be high. But wait, shouldn't my common sense tell me the exact same thing? Sort of. There's some fascinating research on how well humans do this in practice. People tend to be excellent at recognizing conditions under which rare events are likely to occur, but they also overestimate how often they occur. Imagine a perennially terrible sports team buys a ton of great players. An otherwise good model might predict that the team will still be terrible when a human would recognize that improvement is likely. Basically, humans are really good at spotting situations when the algorithm doesn't exactly apply. We call these corner cases. The problem is that we constantly look for corner cases, are quick to say that we found one, and are usually wrong. We overestimate how often they really occur. If you don't believe me, take a look at some NCAA tournament brackets that people have filled out. You'll see that way too many people pick way too many upsets and are right sometimes, but are usually wrong. Good predictive models will tend to outperform humans in the vast majority of cases. Humans will often point out and remember when predictive models were wrong, but it's important to note that this is probably just a cognitive bias. So once we build our model, we'll know a bit more about how the world works, we'll have a better sense for what matters and what doesn't, and we'll be a bit better at predicting the future.